video, I want to have a discussion about some subjects when it comes to preparedness and uh, why I think they're important subjects to cover, but I, I want you to take away from this that I'm not trying to tell you to focus on each one of these implicitly, but you do need the skills for all of them. Be a jack of all trades. Be an asset, not a liability. Because if you focus on one area more than the other, you're going to be a liability to everybody because you're not going to be able to assist in other parts. I think that you should have a bunch of people that are capable of assisting uh, in a lot of different ways uh, rather than just like focusing on one thing. So the first thing to talk about is security. Now, a lot of people have this misconception that security means having a gun in your hand and patrolling your neighborhood. That, that's, that could be part of it, depending on the scenario that you're dealing with. And right now with things... Uh, kind of unstable and society unsure of what's what's to come with everything that's going on. I can understand that people are kind of fearful of what's to come, but th history has shown us that people are typically not going to relinquish their connection to the current uh, amenities that they have established. People will still go to work even though the world's burning. Uh, so uh, when it comes to this subject, uh, I want people to kind of, well, I don't, I don't care what you do, but uh, I generally am not going to be focused on the idea of trigger pulling. It's more the idea of intelligence gathering and being aware of things. Awareness is a big deal. For example, being aware of uh, possible having the government come in and basically rob you of all of this, including security, uh, through something called the FPA. If things really get bad, like they did uh, during COVID, they were actually arresting people for having too many masks and hand sanitizer and stuff, and even uh, some other things that they uh, didn't think they should have had. Uh, look it up. But uh, they were uh, arrested for felonious uh, hoarding. So uh, they, they don't have to answer for that either. Uh, so... Before a lot of people uh, start considering that the government's going to have nothing to do with anything when things get bad, consider history. Uh, Hurricane Katrina, when people were leaving, if they had too much stuff, they had it all confiscated. Sometimes people were arrested for hoarding. Uh, and their definition of hoarding is based on the situation that they're facing and what they think hoarding could be. I mean, it could get to the point in even though it ne hasn't necessarily happened in history, that they could uh, arrest you for hoarding a certain plant. I, whatever. So security should be a little bit more broad, focused on you know reconnaissance, intel gathering, communications, and stuff like that. Being aware of things and not really thinking that you're going to stand up and do a, a 300 with your AR against a massive horde of bandits or whatever, or the government. Uh, you're not that cool and, you know, Live to fight another day. Don't don't be a liability to everybody else just because you think that you're going to get some kind of glory. So next thing is shelter. So everybody should be able to you know basically patch up their house or be able to make a shelter out in the woods if you have to abandon the area that you're at. Even though those uh, a lot of people prefer to bug in and there's nothing wrong with that. You need to know when it's uh, a good time to leave and then come back because uh, you might want to vacate an area and make it empty to dis, um, discourage people from, you know, causing them more problems than they would originally. So, even, even if your shelter, that, if your house that you're bugging in on uh, gets burned down, you're going to have to supplement that with another shelter, and it might be a shelter that's uh, got some problems that you need to know to patch up uh, the current stuff that we deal with, you know, drywall, roofing, and stuff like that. Uh, you need to just know how to fix it up or even make it if you have the materials. Uh, but also making things out of like a tarp and, uh, you know, stuff out in the wild if you can. Uh, making underground shelters can be very efficient for your climate. Next thing is uh, food and water. When it comes to food, you need to know how to grow things, but also uh, know that certain things are worth the effort and water and nutrients and all the, um, everything else. Uh, than others. So, uh, potatoes, carrots, you know, certain, a lot of different spices and stuff like that. Uh, that's going to be more important than growing uh, things like uh, squash or, you know, whatever. Grow some spinach, grow some uh, uh, leafy greens, stuff that will actually give you vitamins. And so, also, if you have flour, make hardtack uh, and learn how to incorporate it into meals. Practice uh, cooking, practice uh, dealing with a little bit of famine, so learn how to skip meals and deal with it. Uh,
water. We use water for a lot of different things. And if you have livestock like chickens or uh, whatever that you're um, going to have to give water to, you're going to have to collect water. You're going to have to process it depending on the type of animal that you have. Uh, and the, the cleanliness will really depend on them. I mean, chickens, they can have pretty much any water. Uh, they're pretty easy and they can, sus uh, they can sustain you for a bit. And uh, they're pretty much self-sufficient if you have a good enough amount of land. Um, but uh, with that said, the next thing is like sanitation. You need to be able to wash yourself and you also need water for growing food. And uh, again, livestock and plants, they take water as well. And so do we. So you need to be able to collect water, but you also need to be able to treat it for yourself for drinking. And um, that is a bit of a challenge if you don't have a lot of the modern technological assisti uh, assistance. Like you can actually store up a bunch of filters, like ones that you can put in a five gallon bucket and filter water with. But um, if you haven't done that, then you might also, even if you've done that, you should also learn some of the natural ways like using grass and charcoal, uh, a wood charcoal and uh, a sand and stuff like that. And uh, learn how to make a kind of filter, but that's still not going to be as good as just being able to boil your water. So you need to know how to treat your water in a way that's not going to make you sick because we've got a lot of bacteria in, uh, in some uh, areas that you would collect water at. So the chances of you getting sick from that are very high. So learn how to uh, pre-treat your water quickly or, you know, over time and gather it properly. And so rainwater would be a good thing to collect if you can in your state. So medical, you need to have basic net medical knowledge, at least be able to deal with scrapes and uh, <clears throat> uh, other things, uh, remedies for uh, simple things like headaches, colds, you know, what have you. Uh, so uh, most of the time the medical stuff and the food kind of go hand in hand because most of the problem with our society today for a lot of our ailments has to do with the diet, not necessarily, you know, just spontaneously, you know, happening. So uh, eating properly can be a big deal for that uh, to uh, preventing medical issues. But and some people are going to be kind of SOL if things really get bad where they like type 1 diabetics. Uh, they're not going to be able to get insulin unless they raid a pharmacy and even then it's perishable and it's also going to be uh, a problem with quantity and there's only so much time that they're going to have with that medication. So medical is a big concern so it is pretty high on the priority for some people, higher for others than, or higher for some than others. So <clears throat> the next thing is social interaction. We know that the lone wolf dies alone, right? Well, the, the problem is that this kind of goes hand in hand with this because of our desire to be uh, kind of social and, uh, you know, misery loves company. Everybody wants to be miserable together, right? We want to share the company of other people going through our experiences for comfort and stuff like that, but also to crossload uh, some of these skills and be able to rely on each other so that we actually have a little bit more security, um, better shelter, better quality of life, right? So... <clears throat> The problem is a lot of people today do not interact much at all. Like they don't have social skills, uh, temper problems, you know, whatever, um, letting politics get in the way of interaction. And it's a two-way street on that. But uh, it, there's just a kind of a social problem to begin with. We're so divided right now that people don't really know how to talk to their neighbor anymore. And uh, sometimes our neighbors just are not good to talk to. Uh, so uh, anyways, with all that said, that's pretty much it that I have to talk about when it comes to these subjects. But if you can work on it, then work on it. As far as social interaction, go try to talk to your neighbor if they're even... Uh, if they seem like they would be uh, good to talk to and maybe they share the same concerns that you do and maybe you can start talking about some of these things, just basic stuff. Learn to build a, uh, a campsite with just a tarp. Uh, learn to build a fire and how to boil water. Learn how to process uh, certain foods like how to skin a squirrel or uh, how to cook up uh, certain things and when the power goes out, what to do. Uh, some medical stuff, some maybe some herbal remedies, maybe some uh, spices in combination, uh, treated in a certain, you know, concept.
concentration to answer some medical uh, issues like cold or flu uh, or headaches or whatever. And, you know, learn to, you know, work together to be your own security element in your neighborhood. So there's a lot of things that you can do when, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, people can do that I don't think they're really considering. They think that they're just a bunch of islands with their own home, and that's not necessarily the case. We actually do need to kind of spread out and get a network because that's going to provide us the best uh, chance of sustaining our lives for longer when things really go bad. Uh, now, we're talking about extremes here, but uh, a lot of people always seem to think that the next bad thing is the worst thing that's ever going to happen. And I hear it all the time, and it's kind of annoying. But that's why I make these videos, just to kind of give my two cents on things. And this is just where I feel people have, have shortcomings. So go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And 